he's lost the dressing room. He's lost the trust of the players. 100% he should have rested. Enrique now earns the respect of the whole team. Shout out to all the people out there, shout out to the members, the people who view, and also to my Patreon people, people on Patreon. Remember, Patreon takes less of a cut from YouTube, so I thank, thank you for all of those guys who support me on Patreon. Support your boy on Patreon, support your boy by becoming a member, support your boy by watching these vids. Even the haters, I love the haters as well. The lovers, the haters, the psychopaths, the English talents, and your bummer, sick weirdo stuff, we appreciate you. And all that you bring again, this is just a thank you, thank you to the football hot community because without your guys' support, I won't be able to give you all this technique and give you. Look, I told you this studio is all paid for by you guys, man. This studio, the 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 tech, the new now, new now, it's all paid by you guys. So, guys, this is football. No, this is gonna be weekly. It's gonna be weekly. So, I'm gonna try to be doing this weekly. So, let's go to church. What's up, Winston, baby? Winston, I said, it's, do you think? Church was cool with the black. Do you think he'll be cool with the black people? It is what it is. Easy, chill. So, draw City Newcastle. Now, with City Newcastle drawing, because people were like, how would they react from that very tempestuous game against your boys, Arsenal? And when you look at them dropping points, it's like, okay, what's going to happen now? They drop points to Newcastle. It's not that big a freaking deal. This is still the Pep's Invitational, and until further notice, this is still Pep's BH. The Premier League is still Pep's BH. He's still pimping out the freaking EPL until further notice, because I'm sorry, a draw against Newcastle isn't going to make me bet against Foynero. It's not, not going to happen. But you have to look at um, Pep Guardiola. He came out and he said that we're ready for war. And I think Pep Guardiola, remember, he, one of his biggest inspirations is Michael Jordan. You can look at the Michael Jordan um, documentary, The Last Dance. Pep wants war. And Pep's, and I think Pep is using every single thing that can help to motivate him to motivate the team to do five in a row. Because once you've done four in a row, the only motivation you have is, okay, let's just do it again. But you need something extra because they are, you have a target on your back. There are people that want you to be brought down like me. There are people that want you to go to jail for 115 like me. <laughs> so when you have all of these negative forces trying to bring you down, you need that extra motivation. So I think for Pep Guardiola, maybe he views this as a challenge. And he's going to say to himself and to his team that they don't think we can do five in a row. We've already broken ground. We've broken so many records already. Goals records, points records, consecutive wins record. People will say, shout out to your boy Fergie, we are the greatest Premier League dynasty of all time. But they want to continue. They want to keep on doing that. And I think that when you're looking at what can motivate you, maybe there's the thing that they can motivate these guys to even say, say what's up and say and write again. Um, Rodri. Here's the thing. I love Rodri. I think Rodri is a quality player. I just don't think he is as vital to Man City that, than people think. People say, oh, half up, you bold prick. Check the records. Look at the stats. Look at the times they've, they've um, had no Rodri and the amount of L's that they've taken. And you know what my answer to that is? I don't give a damn. You, I am not betting against Man City, even if they don't have your boy Rodrigo or Rodriguez or whatever the heck his freaking name is. Is it? It is a big loss. And I do think that, especially looking at when he, he came off and what happened in the Arsenal game, and now this game where he's not in the game and he's not going to be around for the rest of the season, it's very easy to say, oh, see what I told you, let's review in December. Let's review up to week 919. And let's see where we're at. Because if after week 19, week 21, City are five points behind, they're taking L's, they're drawing games, and they now look completely out of sorts, you got me. <laughs> you got me. But until then... There is no, there's not enough data to show that without Rodri, City can't function. Because I say this and I say it again, the most important piece from Man City is that bold dude from Catalonia. That's the most important dude. So, looking for a reaction, and Arsenal reacted. Now they almost dropped the ball against the Foxes, but Arsenal says it was. But if something that's very key is Trossard. That's that's where I want to come through, because Trossard might just be the key guy that Arsenal need. Now, what I've always said, Arsenal have the best defense in the league, 100%. 
The midfield is functional enough. Keeper, real good. Flank players, boom. But it's that finisher and it's that striker. Saka doesn't give you the amount of productivity that Salah gives you. The less said about the Brazilian Nelly Furtado, the, the, the better. So Arsenal's or Arteta's answer is we're going to spread love around and the goal's going to spread around. Cool, but I still like a guy who you know can give you 20 to 25 and then 10, 7, 10, 7, 10, 7. Then that is a sustainable way to say what's up. Because that's what happened with City with Aguero and now City with Haaland. But for Trossard, this guy's scoring goals. This guy's scoring goals and this guy is, is getting cheese. And I think what Arsenal have to realize is this ain't just no super sub. Start the man. This guy is not a bona fide starter because when you look at the fact of Martinelli just in the <laughs> he ain't that dude, that's where you've got to go. And I'll be real with you. If you're talking about the pecking order of a left sided players for Arsenal, I think Trusted is one, Sterling's two. Sterling should be ahead of Martinelli. Martinelli just he's fallen off a cliff. This is the reality of Martinelli. Nelly Fortado had a purple patch. It was a great pop for the World Cup. Since then, he's been sold. He's been selling fruits. He sells fruits now. He is a bona fide classy brick. It is what it is. Like, this is what happens. But Trossard, the boy Dro, Dro, Dro could be the key component for Aston saying what's up. Because if Dro keeps on scoring these Gs, specifically these important Gs, because what does Uncle H always say? It's not how many you score. It's when you score. It's the equalizers. It's the winning goals. It's the important goals. It's the go-ahead goals. It's the goals that turn the course of the game. Important goals over stats panning goals will always mean something. Are you listing your boy Kane? So shout out to your boy Drew, who could be the difference maker for Arsenal this season because he's always been a quality player. Now, the draw for Belgium in the same dude, but we can say that for him, several other Belgian players. But draw. For Brighton, but specifically for Arsenal, he's been money. And I think he's definitely going to be one of the most important players for your boys Arsenal. Look, from what we've seen so far, the Robin Hood of Sherwood Forest was a blip. That has been Liverpool's only blip so far this season. I still don't even understand how they lost that game. Based on just how well they've done, how well they've acquitted themselves. But you know what? It's football. Those things happen. Because there's so much focus on Arsenal City, Arsenal City, Arsenal City. We know how important Klopp was. Slots is coming in from the Eredivisie. He doesn't have much skill in the game. So people are saying, okay, third, fourth, top four, but they're not going to challenge for the title. It's early days. It's really early, early days. But Chiesa is a great acquisition. If Jota can be kept fit, that'll be key. Tata... Alice in Wonderland, The Dyke, Lala, these are guys who know how to win a Premier League, who have won a UCL. So there's quality in there, there's some youth, but there's some experience and some quality. There are the pieces there for Liverpool to win this title. Would I put my money on Liverpool winning the title? No. Not because of the group, but because of the manager. I just don't believe this manager can out Pep, your boy Pep Guardiola, who has broken the code for league football. But they're starting well. They're starting well. And I think if Liverpool keep this momentum going, you cannot ignore them. And we have to, at this moment in time, until they fall off a cliff and go through a bad patch, we've got to give Ambrose his credit. We've got to give Ambrose his credit. The slot machine is doing his damn thing. Got to give him his credit. So... Again, similar to what I said with Pep, let's see where we're at in the week 19. If in week 19, Ambrose is still saying, what's up? Yo, we may have a three-horse race. So as of right now, Liverpool look good. I'm not yet sold to say, oh, they can definitely win the title. Let's take it game by game by game by game, week by week, so we can see what they can do. Um, we have the best player in the league. We are the best player in the league. Like, Chelsea are the best player in the league. I'm f I feel something special can happen this season. Because do you know, do you know where... Things happen for a reason. Things happen for a reason. Because... Coming 12, that was a blessing in disguise. It was a blessing in disguise. Because do you know what that was? 12th, Clare Lake, 443. 
People have not discounted Chelsea. People have not ignored the legitimate UCL winners. So as the legitimate defending UCL champions, with us being out of the spotlights, it means we can come under the radar. And I do believe that the, the legitimate UCL defending champions can make a run, specifically based on the hardship of the last two seasons. The players are there. The group is there. The football is there. The less said about Robert Rover Sanchez, the, the better. The defense is iffy. But when you have the unquestionably undisputed best player in the league, sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. So I have confidence that we can see what's up. I have confidence that we can see what's up. Because I just think that with Jermaine, you see, that is someone that we can rally behind because look at the invincible season with what Henri did. Look at the days with United when they had Rooney or Cristiano Ronaldo. Look at City with Haaland or when City had your boy um, KDB. Yes, you need a great team. Yes, you need a very good manager. But you need that supernova. You need that superstar. You need that individual. There is an I in team. You were lied to. It is T I E A M. That is the that is the real spelling of Timmy. T I E A M. Because then there needs to be one I who says what's up, and the one I is your boy Jermaine. And as long as Jermaine is here, we can say what's up. That's what I'm saying. This season, the Blues rise. The Blues rise like a phoenix of fire. Look, <laughs> boy Chester divided are screwed. This club is finished. Like, in 2024, you're not taking this guy seriously. That was an embarrassing beatdown. I'll keep it a stack. Ten actually already be sacked. I, am, I will be shocked by the, that if, by the end of this transmission, and by the time this goes, gets this uploaded, 20 Hag isn't sacked. It's done. He's lost the dressing room. He's lost the trust of the players. And once that happens, you have to step in and be like, there's a new voice is needed. Once the players lose faith in that voice, <clears throat> there's a miscommunication. It's over. And for the old, for, for the hand, you only have yourself to freaking blame. You were here to bring in a philosophy. You're not here for Gid. No one brought you for Gid. Gid is Maria's job. Gid is Conte's job. Gid is Allegri's job. You're not here for Gid. You're here for a philosophy. This was supposed to be, you're supposed to be a philosophy merchant from Ajax, Total Football, Cruyff, and all that um, beautiful stuff. But you didn't bring that stuff. Okay, where is the Renos Michel's psychology beside you from the freaking 70s? Okay, you're freaking Dutch. Now, do, you, do your freaking Dutch thing, man. Von Dutch, baby. Um... It's because you have to look at you're playing at the crib. It's Tottenham Hotspur. It's Angie Martinez. 11 v 11, you got outplayed. Your captain gets stupidly sent hands off. It was just a mess on all corners. And you have to even add to the fact that you couldn't even beat FC 26. And our guys are now saying that, like, because you used to play for FC 26, when you had hair, you're on the take. So they're not checking your bank balance. So it's, 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 the optics just look horribly bad. And I just think that the, for United season to survive, because this could get a whole lot worse. It could get a whole lot worse because there's Porto away, then there's Villa away. It could get a whole lot worse. So the best thing to do, whether it's rude, or you go and find a competent, better manager, keyword, a manager with experience to come in and actually get results from this team. Because is this team great? No. But should this team get battered and as played by Tottenham? Heck no. So that's why that's a better, more experienced manager with these sets of players can do a lot better with the hack. That's, that, that's just a fact. Um, look, he rotated. The Flickstar rotated. And many people are blaming him for the loss. Flick has taken responsibility for the loss. But you have to understand this, Nat. He should have done that. 100% he should have rested. Because the whole point of a season is rest, flip, boom. Because hindsight is, is 2020. Well, you know, you could have played these guys and kept on going. Okay, what if he plays the same team and then Yamal gets injured? Rafinha gets injured. If that happens, then what? What would the response be? So, you like, 
I, I get what, because what was worrying was how badly they got beat and how badly they got exposed. But I think for the Flickster, he just, it's now for something to, for him to learn about, like, you know what, let me now look at these young prepubescents and be like, look, IVF kids, adopted kids, orphans, we've got to do better. We've, we've got to step up. And maybe he goes to Laura Laporte and says, open up that big belly of yours. We need another freaking lever. We need to do more of this stuff in January because we need more strength in depth. But 100% I defend Flick um, rotating. He had to rotate because that was the most responsible thing to do with what is a very long season with a lot of very young players. But the fact that they're still top of the league, they've only lost one game and then won the rest of their games, it has still been an outstanding start to, to, to the season. So this one loss, very bad loss, doesn't negate the incredible coaching job that Flick has done. It's a long season. It's a long season. It's a freaking marathon but my advice to flick is do not outrun your man don't run the guy to the ground because this is football's golden child this is the golden child of football this is the savior of football this is the future of football and i just feel that whether it's a fair and Torres to step up other guys have to step up and that's b team those secondary players have to come in say what's up and now try to assist this, this dude man um and speaking about your man man bro Yes, they, they lost. Look at that Yamal goal. What this guy is, because I just, I have to keep explaining to you guys, guys, he's 17. He's 17 years of age. For a guy this young to be balling like this is freaking insane. Like on Twitter, someone put up like his goal catalog. Guys, have you seen the quality of his goals? For a guy who is 16, 17, have you seen thing the quality of the goals? Are we going to forget the goal he scored as a 16-year-old in his first international tournament against a team like France in the semifinals of a European Championship? Like, we sometimes, I think we just need to just pause and just take into stock as to like, do you know what this kid is doing? This is a, ch this is a, this is a child. This is an umbilical cord merchants, bro. There's still blood on his freaking skin, okay, bro? This is a... I mean, come on. Come on. But all I say is that as great as this guy is, as special as... And this guy is special. This kid is special. He can't be playing so many games. Because if he plays these many games, he is going to be injured. And us, the fans, us, the consumer, we will get... We will we, we lose out. Because then we now have to now watch that bomber street run from no, it tries to control a damn ball. And no one wants that. <laughs> so please, please, please protect your mouth at all costs. So look, the Madrid Derby, man. Like, see, what that Madrid Derby it showed was this could be a three horse race. Because if you're Real, you should feel that you that Real should have won that game. I felt that. Carlos substitutions perhaps messed things up. Now, I still don't believe Vinny was, was tired. Yes, Vinny was arguing with Koke, arguing with Llorente and everything, but he was hyped up. And I do believe that if Vinny remained on the pitch with Andre coming on for, for Rodrigo, Real could have gotten that, that second goal. I believe that could have happened. But what this shows is, because let's, let's, let's keep it a circle. Carlos not, has never defended his league title. Barca, great start to the season, is still a very, very young team that's now very reliant on a 17-year-old. For Atletico Madrid, Conor Gallagher, that's, that's a great purchase. Conor Gallagher is a great purchase. Yes, you may have wanted him more, but a long way to go into the season, Julian Alvarez is still a very good buy. This is still an extremely talented player. A lot of money was invested. But it's a long ass season to, to go. It's a long ass season to go. So when you just look at Atleti's team and the situation with Real, situation with Barca, this could be a three-horse race. And if this is a three-horse race, oh, this is a great for La Liga. It's great for La Liga. Like the more teams who are in contention to win a league title, the more interesting and fascinating the league is. So I do believe that if Simeone gets the balance of the team right, specifically how he uses Alvarez and how he uses Alvarez with your boy Griezmann. Atletico could, could say what's up, but for Real Madrid, they are, they are the favorites because when, yes, there are injuries, but when everybody is fit, bro, you've got the pretty much the Ballon d'Or winner on your team, 
we know how incredible Juju is. There are there is still the pieces of a team that can say what's up. There's still the pieces of a team that can say what's up. So, um, interesting, you know. But I look, <laughs> you get what you deserve, and. People can say, oh, Real deserved to win because they were winning for such a long time. Athletic kept on fighting. And it was a very well-taken goal, especially by Korea. So in the end, you can just say they did deserve to at least get something from that damn game. Look, we had a discussion about Couture and the Ultras. And, you know, I said what I said, which has been the fact of Ultras, yes. I suppose that they are needed in football to an extent. But particular Ultras, if you are fans who passionately support your team without bringing any negativity that is great that's essential for atmosphere and identity Dortmund's yellow wall 100 percent but when you now have the fascists like for Lazio and we now have some of these other athletic guys trying to almost injure players how is that positive <laughs> I don't understand how that is positive. See, there is one thing having a political belief, and there's another thing where you are trying to spread negativity, where, no, this is no longer a political belief. This is where, no, you are just being negative and bringing negativity to something. Bro, I, there are some views I have that are conservative. <laughs> so I am no kind of oh, left, liberal, bro, bro. All ultra right wing people are bozos. Ultra left wing people are bozos. Both extremes are, are bozos, left and right. So, and there's, there's some views I have that are liberal. There's some views that I have that are conservative. <laughs> but for for some sections of these ultras, I'm like, you're not bringing anything of benefit to football. Because at the end of the day, I'm not here to watch you, the fans. I don't tune in to watch the fans. I don't pay a fee of La Liga TV to like, oh, I only wanted to see these fans in these ski masks to wave their flags. No, I'm here to watch football. I'm here to watch Griezmann. I'm here to watch Alvarez. I'm here to watch Vini, Bellingham, Rudiger, Courtois, Oblak, and all this. That's what I'm here to watch these players play at the very highest level in a spot that I love. That's what I'm here for. I am here for the fans. With all due disrespect, I'm not here to see you, the fans, act crazy or act tough. No, I'm here to watch these excellent elite football players play the sport that I love. So, that's where I'm at with that. Thing. So, let's go over to League ah, League 2. I'm loving it. <sighs> Barcode. No. Barcola. No, he, de he deserves to, to be called by his real name. He's, he's a kid is bowling. Kid is balling. And I think that, you know, Barcola, it seems very similar to Vinny in a sense of when I first saw him, I was very aggressive in how I criticized him. This guy's trash, bomb, whatever, whatever. But he's young. And I think that what you've seen is a guy really improve from being a very, like, crazy, he may be effective, but just trying things to, oh no. This is a guy that is now knowing exactly what he's doing and is now being he's now a fully effective member of this team. And you've got to I mean, you've got to say what's up to that. So you know you I have to respect that. I've got to respect that. Um that's barcode, he's bowling. So 3-1 against Renz and um PSG, you know, maintained their unbeaten record on top of the table. Um so look man, shout out to, to him, man, and I think that if he keeps on going at this rate, not, not only do PSG benefit, but France benefit as well. And again, what's going to be very fascinating this season is no egos, no massive superstar. This is very much Luis Enrique's team. And this is now, keyword, a team. This is now a union where there's not a big ego. Speaking of egos and Luis Enrique, because this is a perfect segue into the Enrique versus Dembele beef. So, Dembele... He's been taken out of um, this the squad to face Arsenal. And not much detail has been given, but Enrique just said that he felt that he disrespected the team, was unprofessional, and therefore he's been taken out. That there's no arguments or anything. So we don't know exactly what has happened. That's just what Enrique is saying to perhaps just quieten things. But I like this. I like this. The issue with PSG, specifically during when Emery was around, it was, it was Neymar's team, and whatever Neymar said went. And once, ne and once Neymar left, it was now Mbappe's team. 
for this whole thing is where it can be a player's team, but there should be still be a bit decorum. Case in point. It was Cristiano's team. And Man United. But the head honcho was, was Fergie. Fergie was still the head honcho and Cristiano still bowed his head to Fergie. And then when Cristiano went to um, Real Madrid, so Mar Mourinho was still the head honcho, Carlo, then Zidane. For Messi, oh, Messi it was Messi, then Messi is the superstar. For Messi, Nina, it's your boy Pep. It's your boy Luis and, and Enrique. He always acknowledged that no, he's still the manager. And what the manager says goes. That's just how football to crime works. So I like how Enrique, he's stamping his authority and be like, yes, you are now the face of this team. This is now your team and you've been one of our best players. That doesn't matter. No matter how good you are, your profile, you being the face of this team, if you disrespect me or disrespect team decorum, you're out and you will be punished. That is good. That is proper. Because what that shows, Enrique now ends the respect of the whole team. Because when the whole team now sees that, oh, so when Marquinhos, uh, Vitinha, Zion Emery, Barcola now sees, oh, wow. Okay, wow, well, okay, no. So Dembele isn't above reproach. He isn't above being disciplined if he acts out. All right. It sends a very, very good message to the rest of the team. Shout out to boy Monaco, who, along with PSG, are still the only two unbeaten teams in France and with a 2 1 double over more Pele. And look, the Monaco team, it's decent. It's a decent team. But I'm not sure, I think, and I believe um, Florin. Okay, now, guys, let's be real right now. So in America, you say Balogun. No. In Nigeria, the, you do not pronounce the N. It's Balogun. Balogun. Same thing, you know, in America, they say I'm Stallone. That's not his, it's, it's not called Stallone. It's Stallone. It's Stallone. But the Americanized is Stallone. So the Americanized is Balogun. That is a Nigerian son name. Because I knew people called Balogu in Nigeria. So it's Balogu. That is his name. Folari Balogu. That is his name. Because of course he's, he's called for Monocon. Look, they're doing all right. They're doing all right. And I, and I do feel that, you know, um, it could be an interesting season if you were, say that's Peshi and Monocon. Maybe even Marseille now say, what's up? And speaking of Marseille, they lost. They, they lost. They lost 1-0 to... Now they're calling them Chelsea B. <laughs> they call it Chelsea B. It's one of our feeder teams. Of course, that's Strasbourg. That, that is pretty much a feeder club for your boys, Chelsea. And look, doing, doing their thing. And I think, look, even if it's only one loss, I still believe that Marseille are going to be a team that's going to probably be up there. And again, similar to La Liga, if this really is like a three-horse race, I think it would be pretty cool. And I do feel that it's still a good Marseille team. Greenwood has still been one of the best players. And that's Marseille PSG I should be intriguing. Serie A, Serie A, Serie A, Serie A, man. So, Inter Milan, go back to winning ways, man. Huge, huge L. He massive L against your fierce um, Derby rivals. And let's be really a team that I thought they would, they, they would beat. So the key thing was how they would bounce back. They bounced back. But what was very key and more key about the 3-2 win over Udinese was Lataro Martinez. Now, the issue is that Lataro Martinez, he's just not been scoring and he's actually gone through a crazy goal draft. I still have to defend me saying that Lataro Martinez has a great Ballon d'Or shout based off of last season, of what he did for Argentina and for Inter. But for this season, oh no, he's been a, a bomb. He's been a bomb. But gotten two goals, that is great news for Inter Milan because a, for Inter to defend their title, Lataro Martinez is pivotal. Based on just how crucial he was for them last season, He's important. So for Simone Inzaghi, he knows that if Lazaro Martinez plays badly and in scoring, Inter are screwed and they don't defend their title. So this is good news for Simone Inzaghi. And I think what this shows is that, no, look, this is, this is going to be tough. This is going to be tough. A new look UV with a new manager. A new look Napoli with a new manager. This is going to be harder to defend your title this season as opposed to doing it last season. But it's, it's, it's both what to get back on winning terms, but specifically your captain, your talisman, your main man, dropping a freaking two-piece there but he needs to consistently do it and his co-pilot his co-man marcus turam also needs to contribute as well um it's milan 
bro, we all thought that your um that the um your boy was gonna get sacked. Fonseca was gonna get sacked, but he's leaving to live, live another day and a three zero beat down against Lecce. Now Marta has this new look. Shout out to the new look. Ah. Okay, Morata is 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 based on the amount of teams Morata has played for. It's as if he is he's he's almost like the P word. I'll give you a clue: Amber Rose, Kim Kardashian. He's Kim Kardashianing himself at almost going to different clubs. Now, Morata ain't no Shevchenko. He ain't no Inzaghi, and he is sure as heck ain't no freaking George Weah. But if he can score and just help the team, help to contribute. Then that's just great. So shout out to him though. Pulisic, bro. Pulisic, the, the, the guy's on a run. The guy Pulisic, he's on a run. The guy, your boy Pulisic is on a run. And I think, look at him, him scoring in the Milan derby. Him scoring against Liverpool. And him scoring again. He is really, really finding his form. And I think if you're American, this bodes well as you're now looking forward to 2026. And I always say for Pulisic, he's way better than London Donovan. Way better. And I do believe that as a footballer, and in terms of just as an offensive threat, I do believe he's more threatening than Dempsey, but I just think Dempsey just achieved more for, for club and country. But this is a great situation for Pulisic, because I think that if Pulisic can just keep on saying what's up and just keep on advancing with Milan and keep on in this good goal scoring form, he's going to be a great asset for Fonseca and for this Milan team. So he just keeps on, he needs to keep on doing his thing, and maybe, just maybe, he can lead America to greatness in 2026 without a dub if that's possible Juventus man so Juventus very near the, the top of the table 3-0 dub over Genoa but very key here is their 21 year old starlet which is of course Francisco Conceicao of course the son of the port manager I still believe it's the port manager I still remember when he played for Portugal so I was reading about this and um so George Mendes is his agent massive agent there's like a gentleman's agreement where so he's on loan but i think if he continues to impress Juve can now sign him um on a full contract and i'm liking what Juve are doing let's be real shout out to allegri got to two ucl finals britain in, in 2017 he was playing peak fossil ball so Juve had to move away from peak fossil ball bringing in a new money mansion tego motor and some younger players You've got your boy Yildiz saying what's up, and you have your boy Francisco Conceicao saying what's up. So, Juve are looking to the future right now, rather than holding on to freaking dinosaurs. And I think this bodes well, specifically in Conceicao, getting this goal, playing well off the bench. So, if he really, along with Yildiz there, they're both ballers, Juve now have a platform to now build on for several years into the future. Because what every real club should do is, let's say what's up now. But we have to say what's up now. And look ahead to the future. We have to. We can walk and chew gum at the same time. We can win now, but also build and so we we maintain winning five, six, seven years in a, in a row. So the young guys take over the present guys as well. And Yildiz and Kozicha are two young, very exciting players. Top of the table. Top of the table. The only blip was that L to Verona on the opening day of the season, but Conte has his players. He has his team, and Conte is proving that give me my players, give me my, my support, and as long as it ain't Tottenham, I will deliver. It's a long way to go. But I think what this shows right now is we could be looking at a very, very exciting Serie A race. So this could be like three or four teams could say what's up because we already know Inter will be in the defending champions. Juventus look good. Napoli under Conte, who knows how to win in league and knows how to win several Serie A titles, and has won it with two different teams. Because one thing, if let's say Conte only won it with Juve, and say, okay, that's just Calcio Politax. But he won it with Inter, very impressively, with Lukaku, a striker he has now. So, bro, I mean, it's so far so good. It's so far so good. Long way to go. Long way to go. But so far, Conte is now saying, no, 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 no. I'm still that dude. Don't judge me based off of what's happened at Tottenham. I'm still that dude. I'm still that manager. And I think... This could make for a very, very... This could be one of the most entertaining title races when you look at the top places. is what happens in Syria. Insa, you've got a top job on your hands. It's fair, bro. Your club. It ain't going to be easy. The Bundesliga. Um, Bayern Leverkusen, man. Look. 
Could I say it was a great game? There was, there was only one team in it. There was only one team in it. So if you're Leverkusen and you're alone, you're like, I wish we could have done more. I wish we could have asked more questions. I wish that we could have made it much more of a game. But Bayern just did not allow them to, to, to breathe. And I think if you're company, you would be impressed with how Bayern played. But you feel like if based on the possession and how much they had the ball in Leverkusen's danger area, he would have liked a lot more goals. And you think about that chance that Gnabry had hit the bar, he would have probably wanted a bit more. But this takes me over to company. Look, these company's tactics have been... Have, this is a very impressive team. Like, how Bayern are playing is totally different because I compare that game to when Tommy took, took over. It's totally different. So from Tukele Bayern to being in good company, bro, it's like night and day of how different Bayern look in terms of pressing, ball re recovery, and just how dominant they are and just how little they allow the other team to even breathe or have a, 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 a sniff. So I just feel like you're, you are already seeing the extreme stark difference of company's tactics, his management style, and just how effective he has been to this band side. So my question is, can they maintain this? Can they keep this going? And will this lead to them winning the Bundesliga title? Because here's the key thing. 100%, you speak to any band fan now, they are super happy with how band are playing. Like, we are happy, this is a lot more better, a lot more positive, and I, this is really good. But, they want to win. It will only mean something if it comes with a damn trophy. And a trophy that's Banfield, that's their own trophy. Look, I don't... I'm not a hater of King. If you're a world-class player, I expect you to say, what's up? It's as simple as that. I expect you to say, to say what's up? And, and the thing with King is he's a very good stats partner. He's one of the best stats partners out there. But to be elite, you, just, you, you can't ball against Braunschweig, Pescara, and Lugo. You can't. It's cool to, to ball against them. He needs to say what's up against a team like Leverkusen. And what I wanted from Kane is to be a difference maker. maker. Now, if Jeremy Hams had scored that great assist, but he didn't. So for Kane, yeah, especially with the game at 1-1, guilt edge, you needed to come in there and be a damn difference maker. That's what I need from you, bro. Um, shout to your boy, Dortmund, man. So they were 2 down against Buckham. And they ran back to win 4-2, but specifically... Their big major signing, of course, Gerasi from Stuttgart, got a two-piece. And I think that Dortmund have not really had that great of a start of the season. And I think people expected a bit more from them, specifically with the transfers they made, and especially getting one of the best strikers last season in Gerasi. So I think what we want, because again, when you, when you look for it, this could be a force race. It, it could be, with, of course, Bayern, Leverkusen, and if you're not throwing Leipzig, and your boys don't because Stuttgart, eh, they, they, they seem to be up to not, especially with them losing Gerasi, I don't think Stuttgart would probably be as efficient as they were last season, although they played very well in our UCL game against Real Madrid. But speaking of Dortmund, Sain, who is the manager of Dortmund? And Sain is, Sain is married. He's married, and I think. In, now I don't believe in marriage. That's just me. You know, I um, my parents were, were were divorced, so I don't understand. I don't understand the concept of a good loving marriage. You know, my parents married, were divorced and they hated each other. So, but for people who are married, shout out to you. Like you know, I think if it works for you, it works for you. It just doesn't work for me. I, I just don't believe in marriage. But if you believe in marriage, that is all fair with you, and that is all good on you. And I think it should be a loving thing that's promoted for people who are married. Sad is married. Loving wife. His wife. Sahin's wife is his cousin. <laughs>